Grade 6 math number 5.10, problem solving, models to solve different difficult percent problems. We're also going to do choose an operation. You know that when we do word problems, we have to choose a strategy. We can work backwards, solve a simpler problem, choose an operation, or use a model. We could also use a formula or draw a diagram. So we're going to do choose an operation and use a model in this one. The $59.99 dress is on sale for 15% off. So how much is the price of the dress? Well, $59.99 is 100% of the price of the dress. If we break it into 10%, 10% of $59.99 comes out to 5.999. We can round that to $6. Now we need another 5%. So we do half of $6 is $3, and we know that it's $9 off. See? What we needed to find was the price of the dress after the sale discount, and we used the original price, the $59.99, and the 15% off, and we used a bar model and multiplication to help us solve it. Knowing what 10% is, it was easy to figure out another 5% to make the 15%. See? So if we could figure this out in our head, that 10% is just moving the decimal point one place over, we could then cut it in half to find the other 5% to make the 15%. See? When we subtract the $9 from the $59.99, the sale price is $50.99. See? Usually stores, when it's $9.99, they can't charge you that extra percentage of a penny, so they just round up to $6, see? All right, here's one that's a little more detailed. Emma is buying a house, and the bank said it should not be more than two and a half times her annual income to be affordable. She needs to find out how much she can afford and how much money she will need to put 30% down on the house then what the balance will be after that. Well, she makes $54,000 annually, and she needs to figure out what two and a half times that is. So, 54,000 is one time, another 54,000 is another time, and then a half of 54,000 would be 27,000 if you divided it by two. So it'd be like two and a half years of income would be the price of the house she could afford. 54,000 times 2.5, or we could have added it up. After doing our multiplication and counting our hops in the 2.5, we come up with $135,000 when we multiply it and add it up. So we know she can afford a $135,000 house. Now she needs to figure out her 30% down payment to buy a conventional mortgage. So we need 30% of 135000 so we change the percentage to a decimal, 0 0.30, and we multiply it by 135,000. We do our multiplication. I don't need to tell you how by now. You should know how to multiply decimals, right? So we count the hops in the 30% that we changed to a decimal. We count the two hops here. We do all our multiplication, and we add it up, and we count our two hops here, and we find out that she needs to put down $40,500. That's how much she needs in her savings. We take the $40,500 and we subtract it from the $135,000 house that she finds, and we find out that her mortgage balance will be $94,500. See? Now, wouldn't it be a lot different if they said that she could afford two and a half times her income after the down payment? So that means she'd be able to afford even more. We'd have to work backwards to find that one, wouldn't we? If we took off the 30% and then figured out what two and a half times was, we would have to work backwards. We'd have to estimate amounts and start, you know, with a big amount and see what happens when we took 30% off and see if that came out to two and a half times or 54,000. This is normally the route that it goes. So she would need to get a mortgage for 94500 and she would put her down payment down and she'd buy her house. See? So 
That's choosing operations or models to help you solve percentage problems. Sometimes drawing a bar can help you see that you just need a 10% and a 5%, see? Okay, we're going to be coming up on measuring next, and I hope I'll see you there. Bye.